Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation in collaboration with the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. Together, CSC and the School District of Palm Beach County are providing resources to parents, teachers, administrators, and members of the community. The organizations are united to ensure all children reach their developmental milestones, succeed in school, and become thriving adults. This is an exciting time for many parents. They are enrolling their children into kindergarten programs inside the Palm Beach County School District. From birth to age five, brains develop faster than any other time in our lives. That's why the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County invests so heavily in early childhood care and education. Children's Services Council CEO, Dr. Lisa Williams-Taylor, describes how CSC-funded programs work to ensure that children are ready to learn when they enter kindergarten. We at Children's Services Council believe that every child needs to enter school ready to learn. School readiness means that children are ready to learn when they walk into the doors of kindergarten. It means that they're physically, cognitively, and social and emotionally ready to learn to receive what the teachers are giving them. And it means that parents are ready to support their children in their learning and that schools are ready to receive those children. So the vast majority of our dollars go to do just that. Everything from home visiting to literacy to mental health programs to nutrition programs. And we actually fund scholarships for 20,000 children in this community so that those parents can go back to work and those children can be in safe and nurturing environments. And we also have dollars to go to improving the quality of our child care centers. So those dollars can be used for anything from books and curriculum to improving the quality of care through teacher training and professional development. We know that there's a huge return on investment for taxpayers and for our entire community. In fact, four to nine dollars is the return for every dollar invested. And we believe that's important because we know that if children are ready for school, that is predictive of whether they're gonna be reading at third grade and reading at third grade is predictive of whether they're gonna graduate from high school. So this all starts with parents because parents are a child's first teacher. So to get your child ready for school, some of the tips are read to your child, make sure you're sharing stories, and it can be simple things that you do. Going to the grocery store, talking about the colors that you see, the vegetables you see, and there's so many more tips we can provide you. Go to our Every Parent website and app to learn more about what you can do to get your child ready for school. Thanks, Dr. Williams-Taylor. Once again, for more tips, please download the Every Parent app or go to the Every Parent website at everyparentpbc.org. So as a parent whose child is headed for kindergarten, you probably have a lot of questions like, what do you need to know about signing up your son or daughter for the next school year? Pine Jog Elementary School principal to Rachel Thomas helps answer some of your questions. They can call the office, they can come in. Um, we're just open and available to them. We'll make an appointment and make sure that they have everything that they need. If they need translations, we um, will make that available to them. If there's a person that they feel more comfortable speaking with um, in their native language, we make that available to them as well. We're here to service our community, so we're here for them. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to be involved. Get involved with your student, read to them, encourage them to read, encourage them to imagine, encourage them to explore, encourage them, let them hear you read, let them see your human side. And so that when it's time to come onto campus, just let them know that we're extensions of you and your family and we're going to give them as much love and educate them as just as well as they would get at home. inside the Palm Beach County School District. We're inviting you in with open arms, a place to nurture, to learn, and to grow. So we're gonna educate the whole child, so bring them here, we're ready for them. In some ways, signing up your son or daughter for school, that's the easy part. Raising a kindergartner is what's tough. 
What if they're a picky eater? What if they cry when you drop them off at school? We get some quick tips on what to do from the parenting experts who are part of the Ask an Expert series produced by the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. Meal times are not just about nutrition. They're actually social events that have to do with a full range of social etiquette. What are the skills involved that children need to learn in order to contribute and to participate in this as a family activity? Parents need to be prepared to tempt children with trying different foods uh, because there are some parents who get into massive traps with their kids where their kids are just um, so selective about what they eat um, and it becomes such a major battle. For healthy foods, there's a, I've seen it online, it's amazing. You can make art with the, the fruit and vegetables that you're offering. You can make palm trees and you can make a beach scene or whatever, something in their world that they can see and look at and it's fun, so it makes, it, makes them more likely to want to eat it. My quick tip is smoothies especially fruit smoothies, they're delicious. And you can sneak in at least one vegetable into a smoothie and mask it with a bunch of different fruit and you're probably not even gonna taste the vegetable to begin with. So keep offering the healthy food and don't force them to eat it. We want children to have a healthy relationship with food and if you force them to eat it or you may not leave the table until this is finished, it can create a toxic relationship with food which can lead to eating disorders later on. Visual routines go a, such a long way in helping your child transition from the day to the evening. Take a photo of your child brushing their teeth and there's some way to check it off or maybe just something that they can move, whether it's a magnet or Velcro, or be creative. A way that you can say, done, on to the next thing. This goes so far in helping your child calm themselves and know what's coming next and what the evening looks like. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're modeling cleaning up yourself. And after that, offer them two positive choices that help them to clean up. And if the two positive choices are fun, that makes it even more enticing. So it, it'll look like this. It's time to clean up. You have a choice. You can take your food wrapper and pret pretend that you're a basketball player and throw it in the trash can, or we can pretend that you're a football player and you can hug it and you can run to the trash can and put it in. What's your choice? At that point, they're gonna be much more likely to clean up. The child is missing a skill and they don't know what to do. And if a child is coming up to you with information that you see as tattling, you're going to say, is what you're telling me helpful or hurtful? If they say hurtful, you're going to say, here is what's helpful and tell them what to do. For example, if the sibling isn't cleaning up, you're going to say, go up to the sibling and ask, do you want help cleaning up? and that's how you're helpful here. If the child, you say helpful or hurtful, and they say helpful, you're gonna swing back to that same response. Here is how you can be helpful in this situation. Go up to your sibling and ask if they need help cleaning up. Just know that this is a very normal thing. You are the primary attachment figure, and it, it is a difficult thing for both you and the child to separate from each other. Assure the child that they're safe. This is an unknown situation. They don't know what's going to happen when they get dropped off at school or what the babysitter's going to do with them. So tell them, Miss Monica's going to keep you safe or Grandma's going to keep you safe. Before we leave, we're going to have like fun little peekaboo moments. So every parent has this with their child, something, a song that they sing or something we call an I love you ritual and conscious discipline, something where there's a peekaboo moment where you guys can laugh together, you're making eye contact, there's touch and there's presence. You're not on your cell phone at this time. You are fully engaged in this moment. And then that makes the separation so much easier where you can say bye bye, see you later and making sure that they are watching you leave so the, then the teacher or the babysitter can say, mommy or daddy is leaving, let's go do something else now. Some great advice produced by the Children's Services Council. 
We thank our experts for all their parenting tips. And now let's bring back Dr. Lisa Williams-Taylor, CEO of the Children's Services Council, for more information on students getting ready for kindergarten. Well, one thing that's great is that we both have a common goal, and that is that our children are ready when they enter kindergarten. And um, we work very closely with them on many, many different initiatives. Um, one specific one I want to mention is that we have an opportunity um, to, um, we fund over, well over 200 different childcare sites throughout the county. And it's all about trying to improve the quality of the, of the learning environments for our children. And all of the school district sites are all part of that network. And the school district also um, provides all of the coaching for over those over 200 child care centers uh, throughout the community, really providing the technical assistance, the coaching for those directors and um, the, the teachers right in the, the classrooms. So again, it's all about improving quality so our children are ready for school. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard year for our students. It's been a hard year for their parents. Uh, and, but, but I'm really hopeful. I'm hopeful that um, you know, our child care sites have been on top of it, really working really hard to get our children ready for school. And um, they're doing a great job. So I, I'm really hopeful that our kids are going to enter school and be, and be prepared for that, that first day of kindergarten. There's many things that parents can do. I would say one of the, or two of the most important things that they can do is one is have conversations with your, with your children. Um, first of all, the more words they hear, the, the better their literacy skills when they enter school. Um, but it's important to, this is a big transition time for our kids. You know, it's scary. We might not remember it, but it's scary to enter kindergarten. So it's important for, for parents to talk to them about what to expect and really get them excited about going into school when they enter. Um, and I think the, the probably the most important thing that'll have the, the, a significant impact is reading to your kids. There's nothing more important than opening up a book. Um, we call it emergent literacy. So when children enter school, they're learning how to read. These first five years of a, of a child's life, having the parents read to them and talk to them um, really, really helps improve their literacy skills as they, as they move into, into kindergarten. Straight ahead, the key to many of our star students excelling in kindergarten can be attributed to their involvement in voluntary pre-kindergarten. We'll look at this free program here in Palm Beach County straight ahead. crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back. I'm Rick Blackwell. Voluntary pre-kindergarten is a program open to all four-year-olds in Florida. It's not only a great opportunity to prepare your child for elementary school, but it's also free. Offered at almost 400 locations throughout Palm Beach County, VPK gives children the tools to walk into the first day of kindergarten ready to learn and ready to succeed. What is VPK? VPK stands for Voluntary Pre-Kindergarten. In other words, it's your choice as a parent. VPK is probably the most important thing that we can give to our children. Because in a VPK classroom, a child learns all the things that they are going to be able to do in kindergarten. Nothing. It's a free educational program for all four years old. In order for you to be eligible, your child must be four by this day and a resident of Florida. So where can you apply for VPK? You can apply using your home computer, your smartphone, or you can give us a call. 
I thought it was particularly easy. Uh, we just had to go online. We did the application. You need two documents. First being proof of age. So you would need a birth certificate, an immunization record, or a passport. Secondly, you're going to need proof of where you live. So we're going to be either using a Florida driver's license, a pay stub, or a utility bill within the past year. Every child in Palm Beach County needs to be ready to succeed in school and life. Teachers always say that they can teach reading, they can teach math skills, but if a child can't sit, pay attention, follow rules, it's a lot of those skills that are needed so that teachers can actually teach children. And I can't help but always think about the potential that every single one of these children has if they're experiencing quality early care and education. Did you know that the most growth in your child's brain happens before the age of five? When we look at our VPK data, we know that the children who attend VPK are so much more ready than the children who didn't at all. And it's probably because there are trained professionals in a VPK classroom really looking at teacher-child interactions and making sure that that child is ready to learn when they hit that kindergarten age. I love to see the children grow and learn and how enthusiastic they are. That focus on early literacy, it's been like, the best ever. So I know that I have a kid that's going into kindergarten, she's ready. Kids feel confident. By the time that they arrive to kindergarten, they know the routine, they know the structure. They sometimes say, bye mommy, and they don't even cry when they start because they feel prepared. If you see the VPK logo, they offer VPK. We have almost 400 VPK providers in Palm Beach County. Once we got the certificate, it was as easy as finding one close. And they're all over the place. We got one we could walk from my job, so it was really easy. Selecting a quality childcare is definitely a, a hard decision for a parent. We can help you. There's some main elements of quality learning that you look for as a parent when you go to a childcare center. You want to make sure that there's a curriculum, and a curriculum is what they're planning to do with your child on a daily basis and how they're measuring what they're doing with, their, with your child. You also want to make sure that they're screening your child. Screening is so important because at that point in a child's life, every day, every minute of a child's life counts. We can provide a customized list that really match what they're looking for. If you need before school care or after school care, check with your child's VPK program. They may offer it. Don't just keep this great information for yourself. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with other parents in your community. When one child succeeds, all children succeed. <laughs>In that last video, we had the opportunity to meet Wanda Figueroa from the Early Learning Coalition of Palm Beach County. I had a chance to ask her some more questions about the VPK program. The Early Learning Coalition is a nonprofit organization that has one mission. Make sure that every child in Palm Beach County is ready to succeed in school and life. Our main goal is to increase access. Our main goal is giving opportunities for those children. Our main goal is giving opportunities for those parents. We are here for them. The children between the zero to five years old is when the development and grow the most. They are like in a sponge. This is the best opportunity that we can teach in the skills, cognitive, math, literacy. We cannot want any child be behind. So this is an opportunity that we can help the families, help the child, empower that child. So when the child is hit the kindergarten, that child is ready, know the routine, feel prepared. And as a parent, you feel better prepared because the child is ready. VPK, it's a great opportunity. It's a free educational program. What that means is that you can have your child in an instructor environment learning the skills that is needed to be ready. Sometimes as a parent, we are so busy doing these things here and there. So having the child in this program that is a voluntary pre-kindergarten, you make sure that your child have the, receive the information that is needed. And as a parent, what you want is that the child 
succeed you know in the school so this is the program this is perfect it's free and it's give you the information that is needed for that child our thanks to Wanda Figueroa from the Early Learning Coalition. Parents know raising a preschooler can be a struggle sometimes. Rather than reacting to your child's poor behavior, you need to develop a consistent strategy to stop it from happening, according to the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. Let's learn more from our experts. Usually the meltdown is not occurring for the first time when you're in public. It's often occurred at home. So one of the keys for dealing with behaviour issues in public is to deal with them well at home. So if you've got a routine for managing temper outbursts at home, then a child is much less likely to be throwing tantrums in public anyway. Really zero in on what are the behaviours and skills that children need to learn when they're out shopping, when they're grocery shopping, or when they're in a mall. The discussion of some basic ground rules before you get into the store is helpful. The second idea is that when you're just about to go into the store, get down on their eye level, look them in the eye, and ask them this. So what do we have to remember about being a good shopper today? So the main thing is that whenever you've got a behavior problems with kids, always ask this question, what are the skills that I need my child to learn that will take the place of the problem behavior that the child has had in the situation? You can't fix a bite after it happens. It must be preventative. So you see the child in a situation where they're about to bite, you put that teether or washcloth or whatever the object is that they can bite down on and you say, ouch, biting hurts, you may not bite. If you do that enough, then the biting situation should naturally pass. The child bites when they're feeling overwhelmed with a big feeling. So is there stress? Is there um, something that you can do to help the child know what's coming next with maybe a visual? Is the environment overstimulating or maybe it's under it's stimulating? That's the first thing, change the environment. If you find that the child is still biting, Consider shadowing the child, especially during intense moments, which are transitions. If a big change is happening and they don't know what's coming next, they're more likely to bite. And if they're in pro close proximity with another child, they're more likely to bite. So you're, you're right next to them during those times. Something that's important to know is if a child reaches four and they're still biting, this is not developmentally healthy or normal and professional advice should be, um, you should seek professional advice for your child. So if you want kids to stop hurting each other, you need to start focusing on times when they're being cooperative, when they're playing well, when they're sharing and turn taking and engaged in civil cooperative behavior in each other's presence. And when a problem occurs in terms of hitting or pushing, you need to be able to come up and give the child an instruction to stop. You need to tell them what it is they need to do instead or should have done instead, and then get them to practice that uh, of trying again. If they want to have a turn, they need to ask, not push the other child away from the computer or off the slide. Um, and of course, if it happens again, you need to be prepared to back up with another consequence that will sometimes involve removing the child from the situation, give them a brief timeout, or a quiet time after that's up, take them back to the situation, let them try again so that they can be practicing the very skill that they were struggling with that led to the escalation and uh, the hurting in the first place. You want to take the object that they've taken and give it back to whomever took it and say, you may not grab. When you want something, tap your friend and ask, Turn please, now you practice it. Make sure that they have the practice so that they have the experience of what it feels like, looks like, the words that they say coming out of their mouth. They have the practice, so you coach them through. Tap the shoulder, okay, you're tapping. Wait for the eye contact, she's looking at you. Say, turn please. Most likely, especially for young children, the other child with the toy will do this. They'll give the toy and you say, you did it, you asked for a turn and now you have the toy. Consistency is something that we all strive for. The most important form of consistency is 
for the individual parent to be consistent from one day to the next. Inconsistency in parenting styles can be very confusing for children. If uh, on one day a particular behaviour is considered uh, inappropriate but the next day it's considered it's okay and mum does one thing and dad does another, it's hard for children to learn to regulate their behaviour, regulate their emotions and to know what's expected of them. Kids can sometimes learn to tolerate differences between different carers and how they handle things but when the same person is very unpredictable then children are more likely to develop behavioural difficulties and they find it very confusing. As always, for more information on parenting and behaviour, a good place to start is the YouTube channel for the Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County. In particular, search for the Ask an Expert videos. And when we return, we are going to switch gears and look at tips and insight into parenting teenagers. Specifically, how to connect with your teens and ways to discipline middle and high schoolers. The Department of Communications is your source for school district information impacting our schools, our students, our staff, and the entire community. We are the Education Network and Communications, together under one roof, from TV to social media, from the district's websites to its mobile app. Live phone banks during times of need, we're here to inform and answer you. We share important information from our board members and district administrators through our on-air and online coverage of meetings and workshops, available on YouTube, on Comcast 234 and 235, and on AT&T UVerse Channel 99. Information is accessible to all on palmbeachschools.org and to employees on the hub. We communicate through weekly electronic newsletters, updating parents, students, staff, and business partners, and in multiple languages, including Spanish and Haitian Creole. We also serve our diverse community by informing through various platforms, including social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We are your source for live coverage of all high school graduations, garnering tens of thousands of views from across the globe. We are your source for original educational programs focused on South Florida. Our commitment to students and staff also means providing technical support to schools throughout the district and partnering with the county to help ensure all students have access to the internet and the district's issued devices. Technology enhances our ability to connect you to your school leaders. We also bring you videos which highlight our students, our programs, and our schools, including their unique choice and career academies. The Education Network is your source for various events, including the Academic Challenge, Battle of the Books, Songs of the Season, and much more. We host district events, including Teacher of the Year and School-Related Employee of the Year, the Five Star Award Ceremony, and the District's Veterans Day Ceremony. Training videos produced by our team help enhance the work of other departments. So whether connecting students to meals or connecting them to Wi-Fi, communications, and the education network, keeping you informed. Welcome back, I'm Rick Blackwell. From the young ones, to helping our teenagers. The Children's Services Council of Palm Beach County provides advice for parents of children of all ages. So let's talk teens. Here's more on how moms and dads can connect with their children in middle and high school. You know, there's no one right way to do this. The main issue is having your teenagers feel that you are accessible to them and no matter what they tell you, uh, you're willing to listen. Different children, different parents, different families will develop their own style, but what is critical is that the lines of communication are open from day one. Not only do they need you to be consistent, they need you to be honest right? Meaning that this honest consistency means if I break the rules and you tell me that there's a consequence, you actually follow through. 
sleep is extremely important and every day there's more and more research that comes out about the effect of sleep or the lack of sleep on our overall health, on our cardiovascular system and on so many other areas. Some school districts are considering later school start times. That is to make sure that teenagers get the amount of sleep that they need and it is oftentimes, and again this is individual, uh, more than we think. Kids are wanting to do things more independently than uh, parents feel they're ready to do. Parents in these sort of situations have to use their common sense, a good sense of their own personal judgement about whether their kids are ready to be able to undertake the activities that they're proposing to do and be absolutely prepared to say no with a brief explanation and not with um, you know, going rubbery at the knees and just simply caving in because the kids are disappointed or escalative in their demands. Don't make assumptions. Put the screens down, the phones, the TV. Make time to talk and listen. Lead with your ear as a parent. I make this mistake all the time with my three kids. I rush to reassure them rather than take the time to make sure I really have listened to them. No, you are well liked, you're really a great kid. Oh, you can do this, you're really a smart kid. Instead say, you know, tell me why, why you can't do this. It's also just sort of basic parenting 101, listen. It's so important to make those connections. Another question from parents concerns how to discipline your child. Let's hear from our experts on this very difficult subject. Discipline is designed to change behavior. It shouldn't just be designed to punish people. Discipline is just that, it is discipline. It is setting rules, it is setting boundaries, it is setting guidelines with an expectation. And that we don't confuse discipline with punishment because we know that discipline guides children, punishment hurts children, and consequences teaches them. The consequence has to align to the infraction so that that behavior that, that generated whatever the infraction is can actually change. And so we have to continue to give them that lesson through what we do. If the child is misbehaving, we have to set boundaries and have to stick to those boundaries. Those boundaries are best reinforced by the consequence that we give the child. Not a threat, but the consequence. When we're talking about motivating children, the most important form of feedback is actual encouragement. Some kids, however, are not motivated just by praise alone. And then things like having sticker charts or some kind of backup reward um, can be very useful in children learning a new skill or behaviour. You don't want kids to become overly reliant on these kind of external rewards to continue to behave in an appropriate way. So the introduction of a behaviour chart, sticker charts, reward systems are always temporary and transitional and they need to be phased out so that more naturally occurring consequences can serve to maintain the behaviour. When you are watching a situation go down, there's probably an aggressor and a victim. As teachers and parents, we tend to go to the aggressor first and, and beat them over the head with, stop it, you shouldn't be doing that, and all the things that you know are wrong about this. Go to the victim first, and you're going to empower the victim with assertive language. Let's imagine that sister hits the brother. The brother says, ow, mommy, she hit me. My question to this child is, did you like it? He's going to probably say no, nobody likes to be hit. After that, you're going to say, if you don't like it, tap your sister on the shoulder, wait for her to look at you, and you're going to say, I don't like it when you hit me. Timeout does not work, and the reason why it doesn't work is because we are putting children in a position where they are left to think about what they've done wrong, which sounds great, but we're isolating them, and we're not helping them and guiding their thinking. Parents can become more consistent and predictable by having 
uh, conversations with their partners and others who are involved in looking after children to be clear about what kind of behaviours and skills and values that they would like to promote in their children. Because if they're clear about the kind of behaviour they're going to consider acceptable or inappropriate, it's much easier then to decide, okay, well, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to teach these skills and behaviours and how are we going to deal with children who are not observing them? You better do your work early and set the foundation. Because the older a kid gets, the less influence that we as parents really have on them because their world enlarges. It enlarges to things like their peers, social media, and all these things here. So now there are other voices that are there to help shape the way this kid thinks. We have covered a lot of ground. We want to thank the Children's Services Council for their expertise and wisdom and for all the work they do in our communities. We are also thankful for the partnership that we have with CSC inside the Palm Beach County School District. We know when our community works side by side, we can make a huge difference in the lives of students and their parents. Yes, we are truly better together.